In just a few brief weeks since my episode on vaccine passports, things have progressed exponentially in Canada and around the world, with vaccine mandates now being proposed by governments versus simply vaccine passports. Therefore, on Don't Talk TV, I feel I have no choice but to revisit this subject and try to give viewers some practical considerations of how they can deal with this situation. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wandsbutter. I, I'm a criminal defense lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. Episode 51 of Don't Talk TV was a discussion of vaccine passports and my view that in Canadian law, any mandatory medical procedure or any medical procedure that is imposed by way of coercion, forcing people to get a vaccine, for example, in order to go shopping or in order to go traveling, is an assault of a violation of a person's bodily integrity and a violation of several sections of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, including Section 7, the right to life, liberty, and security of the person, violation of mobility rights, violation of equality rights. Now, since that video, I've received a huge number of emails from very concerned Canadian citizens, people who are at risk of losing their livelihoods, people who are at risk of, be of never being able to travel again, and people who are rightly concerned about how much further is this going to go. So in response to that, I'm doing this video to try to explain what are your options. Now, as I say at the beginning of every video, I'm a criminal defense attorney. All my 16 years of experience has been in criminal law, either as a prosecutor or defending criminal cases, situations where individuals have been charged under the Criminal Code of Canada. So unfortunately, I lack the knowledge and more importantly, the experience of constitutional litigation, employment law litigation, human rights litigation. Therefore, this video will be much more along the lines of practical advice versus legal opinions. So before we get into the advice, let's just quickly situate ourselves in the context of the situation of what's going on here. So I mentioned in the preamble mandatory vaccines, and this comes from, a, from an announcement made by the federal government of Canada on Friday, August the 13th. And I have here a CBC article entitled, Federal Government to Require Vaccinations for All Federal Public Servants, Air and Train Passengers. So, what it says here is that Transport Minister Omar Al-Gabra announced today that the federal government will soon require that all public servants be vaccinated, a mandate that he said will also be implemented by Crown Corporations and other federally regulated businesses in the coming weeks. It went on to state that starting as soon as next month, the, the vaccine will be mandatory for federal employees and those working in some federally regulated industries, including airlines and railways, among others, in an effort Effort to boost stalled vaccination rates. So there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They're saying that if you want to stay employed, you need to get the vaccine. You can't get much more coercive than that. I suppose other than having the police or the military grab you and drag you and at gunpoint tell you to get a va to get the vaccine or just pin you down and stab you with it. So we're we're clearly talking about. I mean, there's no, they make no bones about it. Mandatory vaccines. Right around the same time that the federal government made that announcement, we're seeing universities across Ontario, and I suspect across the rest of Canada, but I'm in Ontario, so I focus on that, is that universities are making COVID ma vaccination mandatory on campus, according to this CTV article here. So here they indicate that York University in Toronto, Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, the University of Guelph, and Ontario Tech University in Oshawa, Ontario, Ontario were the latest to say Thursday that they'll require proof of vaccination from those attending their facilities. So very similar to the government mandate, you have universities saying if you want an education, you need to get this injection. Now I mentioned that people are concerned about how much further is this going to go. I think that that is an entirely reasonable question to be asking. Again, just a few weeks ago, the Prime Minister was saying no to vaccine passports, and now we're at the stage of forcing people to get an injection if they want to maintain their employment. And as I mentioned in previous episodes, the media is a huge driver in all of this. So I think it's important to see what is the media saying about this. Now, I have here an American clip from CNN, but I think it's illustrative of what's going on in the mainstream media. Um... 
I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but um, don't get the vaccine. You can't go to the supermarket. Don't have the vaccine. You don't show it. Can't go to the ball game. Don't have the vaccine. Can't go to work. You don't have the vaccine. Can't come here. No shirt, no shoes, no service. That's where I think we should be right now, because we continue to waste our breath on people who are just not going to change. So you have here CNN host Don Lemon publicly calling for the mass murder of millions of people. Now, viewers may say, well, that's a bit extreme to say he's calling for murder. But I, w I would say that's absolutely what he's calling for, because in order to survive, people need food. Where do you get food? Grocery stores. So he's saying that you should not be allowed to buy food if you don't have a certain injection. And he's also saying you shouldn't be allowed to go to work. You should not be allowed to earn money, be employed and earn money in order to buy that food without the injection. He is therefore calling for the murder by starvation of anyone who, for whatever reason, doesn't want to receive these very quickly developed injections. This call for murder by Don Lemon, which went totally unimposed, he's not been charged with calling for the mass murder, he hasn't lost his job, he hasn't been disciplined, the vast majority of people have just passed this over with a yawn. But this call for mass murder bears striking resemblance to what the Soviet Union did to wealthier peasants in the Ukraine in the early days of the Soviet Union, where millions of Ukrainians were starved to death because they were not ideologically reliable as far as the Soviet government was concerned. This is something that we should be extremely concerned about and having valid wonderings, having valid questions about how far is this going to go when a member of the mainstream media on primetime television is calling for mass murder with impunity. Now, in the face of this, many, many people are asking me what they can do. Before I get into my points of what I think can be done, let's do a very quick recap of Canadian medical law. One of the cases I cited in my vaccine passport episode was Hop and Lep, a 1980 decision of the Supreme Court of Canada. The most important quote of that comes at page five of the Canley decision. And I'm gonna highlight the key quote here. The underlying principle is the right of a patient to decide what, if anything, should be done with his body. And let me just say that again. The underlying principle is the right of a patient to decide what, if anything, should be done with his body. This principle, clearly enshrined by law, was recognized in this uh, government report, Canada Communicable Disease Report, a supplement to the Canadian National Report on Immunization from 1996, prepared by Health Canada. We go to page three of this document entitled Immunization in Canada. We have this quote, again, from Health Canada recognizing the what the law is. Unlike some countries, immunization is not mandatory in Canada. It cannot be made mandatory because of the Canadian Constitution. Only three provinces have legislation or regulations under their Health Protection Acts to require proof of immunization for school entrance. It must be emphasized that, in these three provinces, exemptions are permitted for medical or religious grounds and reasons of conscience. Legislation and regulations must not be interpreted to imply compulsory immunization. So in 1996, Health Canada recognized that our constitution clearly prohibited mandatory vaccinations. Yet, here they are, and what can you do about it? So again, I stress, I'm a criminal defense lawyer, I'm not an employment lawyer, I'm not a human rights lawyer, so my comments here are of a practical nature, not of a legal nature. Which brings me to point number one. The number one thing you can and should do is seek out competent, experienced counsel, retain, and get advice from them. Although there's certainly an attraction, I'm sure, to having a lawyer that's personally believes the same that you believe. In my view, any competent ethical lawyer will represent you to the best of their abilities, regardless of their personal views on mandatory vaccines. I would hope that the vast majority of them would recognize what the law is and be ready to fight to uphold that law. Now, a few places that you can look for lawyers or seek assistance, uh, I would list the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. The Canadian Constitution Foundation is another place that fights for constitutional rights. The Constitutional Rights Center in Ontario, and many people watching this video probably know of Rocco Galati, he's involved with that center. And then many law societies have a lawyer referral service, 
if you're still trying to find a lawyer. For example, the Law Society of Ontario has a lawyer referral service where you can get a free half hour consultation with a lawyer who's qualified in the area that you need advice. So failing those other options, I recommend you try calling them and getting a consultation with a lawyer for some advice on what your options are. Now, keep in mind that things like the federal employee vaccine mandate, that hasn't happened yet. They've said it's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So there's only so much you can do ahead of time. You need to wait until it's implemented to see what the wording is to have something to challenge. The second thing you can do that I recommend is you make them earn everything that they take from you. Do not hand in your resignation preemptively. Do not quit your job. Make them take that job from you. Make them fire you from the from your job if you, for whatever reason, do not want to take one of these injections. Again, although I'm not an employment lawyer, I suspect that it would be similar to if you enter a guilty plea. It's a lot. It's pretty much impossible to get a guilty plea overturned and say you've been wrongfully convicted when you admitted your guilt. Likewise, if you quit a job, it's going to be much harder to argue that you've been improperly dismissed versus if you make them fire you. Also, in a purely practical level, if they have to fight to get everyone out of their positions, it's going to make it a lot less palatable. I suspect there's a bit of bluffing going on here that the government and various businesses are hoping that people aren't going to fight and it'll be easy for them to get rid of people that, that, that haven't taken the injection. But if everyone makes them fight for it, makes them earn every drop of blood that they take from you, they may back, back down because it's maybe more work than it's worth. Thirdly, you can vote. A federal election was just announced yesterday on Sunday and before the end of September we will be having a federal election. And the federal employee vaccine mandate is a directly federal thing. If every single person in this country who hasn't received a vaccine or doesn't want to receive one were to vote, that could be an incredibly powerful voting block. Keep in mind that only something around 60% of eligible voters vote in any given election. So if 20%, which is roughly the number of people apparently, allegedly, who haven't received a vaccine, if that entire 20% all voted for one party, that's really more like a 35% swing in voting, which is huge. There have been majority governments formed on 35% of the popular vote. And I would suggest that this isn't just unvaccinated people, any Canadian, Canadians who've received the vaccine, but who oppose a medical apartheid, who oppose their neighbors being starved to death, being losing their livelihood, not being allowed to travel again, people who don't like that vision of Canada, should get out and vote. And in fact, when calling the election, Prime Minister Trudeau specifically said that. He said, this is a chance for Canadians to speak on this issue. He's politicized this issue of mandatory vaccinations. So we should take part in that. And this is a, an opportunity to make a significant difference. Fourthly, there's also the option of protesting. We've seen that when there's been massive protests against these sorts of things, government sits up and takes notice, especially when an election is right around the corner. The announcements that are being made right now are being made because the government is under the impression that the majority, perhaps the vast majority of Canadians, are in full support of this. And unfortunately, I see a lot of people saying, well, I've had both vaccines, so I don't care. But again, I say you should care because today it could be these certain mandatory injections, tomorrow it could be something else. And even if you're fully in favor of the injection, you should not be in favor of coercive medical treatment on your neighbors. Finally, I would suggest what you can do, and this is very important, is don't allow yourself to be discouraged. Keep in mind that historically government overreach has been a thing. It's something that has happened many times before. This may seem very unprecedented, and in some ways it is. In term, It's unprecedented in terms of scope and in terms of the topic, but there's been government overreach before. That's why we have different branches of government. That's why we have a judiciary. That's why we have elections. So things can change so long as you don't surrender your rights. And when government goes too far too fast, that can often backfire. We've seen examples where this has worked. In France, the government of France was forced to backtrack on a vaccine passport plan after massive protests in response to that. In a number of states in the United States, such as Florida and Texas, COVID-19 mandates have been withdrawn because of pressure from the public telling their governments that they were not happy with what was going on. So th those are some practical considerations I I'd offer in response, to the in response to the many questions that I've received. Again, this video is not legal advice. As per my first recommendation, 
If you need legal advice, contact a lawyer. Find a lawyer who's competent in the area that you need, be it employment law if you're concerned about losing your job, uh, be it human rights law if you're concerned about not being able to go to university and receive an education or to go to the grocery store. Retain them and get advice. And if you have a criminal situation that you're dealing with, you can always call me. My 1855 number and my website are listed below. As always, if you have suggestions of show topics you'd like to see me cover, please email me at the address below or leave a comment in the comment section. And if you found this video at all helpful or informative, please consider sharing it, liking it, and of course following me on social media.